All right, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. So tonight we are continuing with uh, linear algebra and um, we're looking at inverses and we cannot conclude on inverses without talking about this important theorem. So the theorem um, says that if A is an N by N invertible matrix, um, then its inverse is unique. Okay, so this is the theorem that we're going to discuss, then later look into examples. So if A is an n by n matrix, then its inverse is unique. By unique, we just mean that it has one inverse. Just mean that it has one inverse, right? So mostly questions are asked on this theorem and how questions are phrased, uh, let me just write how the question may be phrased. So we have that the inverse of a matrix is unique. Now, what they're just basically asking us is to show that the matrix has only one inverse. So to show this one, we're going to do a proof by, by um, contradiction. Contradiction. So we are going to prove by contradiction and how proof by contradiction works is we write a contradiction to the statement. So instead of a matrix having one inverse, we're going to contradict that. We're going to suppose, suppose matrix A has two inverses, has two inverses, a and B. Suppose A has two inverses, I mean K and, um, let's say K and B. Suppose A has two inverses K and B. Just right here, K and B. Then by definition, by definition, if you get matrix A, matrix A times matrix K, which is the inverse. When you multiply them, this is equals to K times matrix A, which gives you an identity matrix, okay? Same applies if you get matrix A and its other inverse B, A and its other inverse B, when you multiply them, this is equals to B times the matrix A, which gives you an identity as well. So this is what we should know. Now, what we are going to do is we'll try to find the relationship between K and B. To find the relationship between K and B, we can start with either K or B. So if we start with K, we can say K is equals to identity times k. So any matrix multiplied by its identity, it gives us that mat matrix. So, but we can replace identity for where there is b. We know because identity is also equals to b times a. So we can replace identity here with, um, with uh, b times a so that we get, um, let me just drag this and just say that. So we'll get this, then we'll replace it where there is identity there. Then we have identity, which is B times A times K. Okay, so we can group these as um, B. Let me write, let me just copy them and group them. I can say this is the same thing as starting with a B times. Let me so we say this is the same thing as um, multiplying A times K first, then times B. So we are grouping A and K, then B, remember B is uh, the inverse of A. So A times K, what is A times K equal to? A times K is equal to identity I. So this will be equal to B, B times the identity i. 
So now what do you get when you multiply a matrix and its identity? What you're going to get is that same matrix. So in this case, we're going to get B. All right, so now we see that K is actually equal to B. Okay, so now what will be our conclusion? Our conclusion will be since K is equal to B, A has only one inverse because K and B are the same matrix, same matrix. So that is how you conclude that one. So that is about it on proving this theorem. You should know how to prove the theorem just like this. So you should write this in your, in your, in your book. This is the proof uh, you prove by contradiction. So now from there, we are going to look at some terminologies that you should know on indices. So these terminologies are the meaning of invertible. Invertible simply means a matrix has an inverse. Non-invertible simply means a matrix has no inverse. Singular, if you are single, you have no one. So singular means a matrix has no one. It has no inverse. And non-singular means a matrix has an inverse. So these terminologies, you should know them and you should write them down. And um, from here, let's uh, look at some questions. All right, so the follow-up questions asking us to determine whether the matrix is this, this, and this matrix are non-singular. So you determine whether the matrix is singular or non-singular. So how do you determine if a matrix is singular or non-singular? You just refer to the terminologies, non-singular has inverse, singular has no inverse. So basically you're going to find the inverses of these three matrices, this, this, and this. This third matrix is 1, 0, 0, 0, 3, 1, 2, 0, 0, a 1, 0, negative 2, 0, 1, 1, 1, negative 1, negative 1, negative 6, negative 2, and 9, and 3. So these three matrices, how you find the inverse, you use those, method that, those methods that we learned. You get the matrix, maybe this matrix, negative, or we'll say this, you get 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, negative 1, negative 2, 1, negative 1. Then you augment with the identity of this. So the identity of this is 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. Then you apply row operations to both of these matrices at the same time. Then this part, when it comes on this side, whatever we get that side, that becomes the inverse of the matrix. Right? So um, have a good evening until we meet again in the next lesson. So we are done with inverses. We'll start looking at um, another, another, another section. So I think uh, basically, um all right so that's that's about it have a good evening